Today, I want to show you a demo of how you can use generative question answering um, using Pinecone and, and OpenAI. Now, recently we hosted a workshop between OpenAI and Pinecone, and people had the opportunity to ask questions themselves as well. And also, if you would like to ask questions, you can do just go uh, to this web address up here. And they asked some really good questions. So one of those uh, that I quite liked was, how how do I define a PyTorch tensor of only zeros? So we come down here. We have paragraph. We have style at the moment, so it's paragraph by a question. We'll, we'll leave it at that for now. Um, I've just here removed the filters for Streamlit Huggy Face TensorFlow. So we're only pulling information from the PyTorch forums, but we can add those back in and it should be able to figure out anyway. But when we know we're looking at PyTorch, why not um, add that in there? And then we get this. So there are a few ways to create a PyTorch tensor of all zeros. I don't know why it's uh, rerunning there. Oh, okay, so we get a slightly different answer. <laughs> Interesting. One way is to use PyTorch function torch zeros. Okay, yeah, that's cool. And then another one is to create using the PyTorch function zeros like. And then it explains what it does as well. So that's quite cool. So it's giving you two options here and also describing you know, how they you know how they vary which which is, is really nice so now we can also have a look at the sources so if we look at the sources we'll see that they're all just coming from pytorch now let's ask another question um so this one's not even really a question i'm just going to say open ai clip and what i want to do is just say okay can you summarize what open AI clip is so we'll come down here let's see what it see what it returns cool so open AI clip is a contrastive language image pre-training model that sees pairs of images and text and returns a matrix of cosine similarity between text and each image okay that's cool so written in PyTorch it uses BCE loss in a well, wow. yeah, that's, that's really cool. So that's just a paragraph. And then we can also, I want to summarize the problems that people have. So essentially this is going to summarize the problems that it sees in the context. So when people are asking questions, it's going to summarize those problems that people are having um, given that particular topic of open AI clip. So we'll come down. It just says this post originally published on that site. Can I rerun, see if it comes up? anything um, actually so we're just going from PyTorch it's probably not a good idea we should probably include include hugging face in there and maybe tensorflow as well okay so how to use the clip model for image search and style transfer how to fine-tune the clip model how to train the model medical data um, and the questions generally seek to find out whether the clip model can be used to generate replies to English language text input. So that's really cool. So, and you can see where it's coming from here. So AI, AI, open AI's clip for image search, style transfer, and so on. So yeah, that's, a, I think, a really cool example of open AI's embedding and generation models uh, used in unison with Pinecone as well. So I want to just show you a little bit of how that works. So over on the left here, we have the indexing data set stage. So this starts with scraping data from different websites. So we use the forum website, so PyTorch, for example, here, and also uh, all the ones that you saw over here. So Streamlit, PyTorch, Hung Face, and TensorFlow. So I scraped all of those. And that resulted in these four uh, JSON line files. Now, can I, let me show you what they look like. 
And we just have these lines of all this information. We have um, the thread. So we have, okay, the dot. So it's coming from the category, the, um, which is, is vision in this case, the thread that it's coming from. So um, like the topic of the, of the conversation in the PyTorch forums, uh, the actual link to it, the question, and then we have a load of like answers basically, or just responses to the question. So we have those, and this is what you end up seeing here. So here I've just concatenated them all together. And then we return over to here, and we feed all those into an OpenAI embedding model. Okay, so if we just went and over here to the API, uh, go to docs, and we can come down, if we come to embeddings, uh, this tell or, or talks to us, about the embeddings and, and how they work and how to actually use them. So, yeah, I mean, if you if you want to have a look at that, you can do. But we're going to see this in a moment anyway. So, switching back over to code, if we come down a little bit, so here I'm just we're cleaning it up. You can one thing you can do is that the tokenizer for GPT three, uh, the embedding model, is similar to GPT two tokenizer. So we can actually download the tokenizer from transformers and check how many roughly how many tokens we're going to have in our when we're feeding it through to the open ai um api so we go down and then here we can go ahead and actually get some embeddings so all we're doing here we get the get embeddings uh endpoint which is from if i just write this in it's just a pip install open AI. And you do need an account error, everything for this. So I'm just <laughs> putting that out. You also need a, a API or, oh yeah, API key here. Um, so yeah, if you need that as well, you go there. And then you can see everything. So this is just our order data from before. And then we also have our embeddings that we just created using that endpoint. Okay, and then we're just saving them to this uh, query embeddings pocket file. Now, at that point, we move over to the index initialization step. So over in our visual, that looks like this. So we just take all those, we've created, we've got all our text, just come through here, created the embeddings, just come over here, and now we're at this stage. So the pine cone, vector DB, we're just putting all of our embeddings into there. So. Let's have a look at how we do that. So we first load our data, check that it's actually there, it looks okay. Um, so the current, this this is changing pretty soon. So maybe by the time you're watching this, uh, it's, it might have already changed, but the max size limit for metadata in Pinecone is five kilobytes. So what we need to do is just check, okay, is the text field that we're feeding in here greater than that? If so, we need to kind of clean up a little bit. And yes, it is. So in this case, a lot of them are, are too big. So what we can do is either trim down, like truncate those text fields, or we can just keep the text locally and then just map the IDs to that text when we're feeding them back in. Now, in this case, I'm just going to map them to IDs. So you imagine uh, you, you we're not going to put our text data in pinecone just the vectors but we also include an id uh, but obviously when we're returning the most relevant vectors back to us we need a way to understand what that text is so that we can feed it into our open ai gpt or generation model so we need a way to go from those ids to the original text which is all we're doing here. So I'm getting the IDs, or I'm creating an ID, uh, which is, is literally just numbers, like nothing special. It doesn't have to be anything special. It just needs to be unique. And then after we've created those IDs, I'm just initializing the index. You can do this before or after if you want. Um, it doesn't really matter, but we do need to make sure that we're using the cosine metric and also using the correct uh, dimensionality. So we have our embeddings that we've created up here. And here we're just saying, okay, use the 
dimensionality that is of those embeddings. So I think, I'm not sure how much it is for the Curie model. It might be something like 2048 dimensionality vectors. But I'm not sure. Actually, we can, we can have a quick look. So go to the Pinecone console, open AI. Okay, so it's 4096 dimensions. Cool. So we do that and then we just connect to our index after we've created it here. Okay, so we create our index. At that point, we can then begin to populate the index with the embeddings that we've created from OpenAI. So that's all I'm doing here. We're doing in batches of 32. So what we're doing is including the ID and then the embedding. And then we're also including metadata. So this is pretty important if we want to do any filtering or, um, you know, we can see here we've got docs, category and thread, and also the, the link. That's really important for our app because we're including all of this information in the sources section that we saw before. We have a look here. We can see we have these sources. So we have the docs followed by the category, followed by the, the name of the thread. And also if we click on it here, it will take us through to the thread. So all of that metadata that we specified there uh, is used to build that sort of sources section there. And then finally, so I mentioned before, Pinecone isn't going to, at this point, handle all of that text information. So all I do is create another uh, data set which contains the ID to text mappings. And then just save that to file in a JSON, in a JSON file. And nothing, nothing crazy there. Okay. So that, that we just went through, was this bit here, which seems like very little for what, what we just uh, spoke about, but yeah, that bit there. So we're now kind of done with the indexing part. So we can, we can like cross that off, we're fine with index everything. We only need to repeat this again if we're adding more data uh, to, our, to our tool. And then we'll go over to the querying bit. So here we're gonna query. Uh, this is what the users are gonna be doing. So we enter this search term, uh, how to use gradient tape and tensorflow as well mentioned before. And if we were gonna go through that, it would look like this. Okay, so we have our, the mappings that we have here. So that's the ID text. We connect to OpenAI. And then we use this uh, get embedding to actually create our embeddings. Uh, we don't run that here though. We load our Pinecone index over here. And then we just define a function that we, is going to use OpenAI to create the query embedding. Um, and then we use that query embedding to retrieve the most relevant context from Pinecone. And then we feed them back into the generation model and retrieve an answer. Okay, so get the embedding. Uh, where is that? So here you can see. So this size here is a Curie model. Uh, you, can, you can see that there. And then we're querying um, Pinecone here. And then we're just going through all of those that we've uh, got and we're creating like a really big string of context, which you, you can see here actually. So you see we have uh, create context. How do I use a gradient tapes and TensorFlow? And this creates the context, but not, the, not this isn't the answer or this isn't the question that we're going to ask to the next gener generative model. This is just all of the source context that we're going to assign to it. So we're going to say, okay, based on all this uh, information here, answer a particular question. So let's go down. And we can, can we see, okay, here are the sort of questions we're gonna ask. So conservative Q&A, uh, answer the question based on the context below. And if the question can't be answered based on the context, say, I don't know. Okay, and then we go on. So I just wanna show you what that might look like in the actual, in the demo. So let's go with, um, 
let's restrict everything to streamlit and we'll ask uh, ask about open ai clip maybe yeah let's let's do that um, and then we just change the conservative q a and go down and we see that we get i don't know right so that's um how the generative model is is kind of reading the, the questions um it's literally reading them and, and kind of producing this pretty intelligent answer based on what we've what we've given it it's, it's following the instructions really well so it had this i don't know and the reason it didn't know is because what it was given there was not found within the context okay it, there was nothing in the streamlit docs that we filtered down to that said anything about OpenAI clip and then as well as that we also um, pass in the answer and then we prompted um, OpenAI's generative model to actually answer that by saying okay answer so we're saying like basically finish this sentence that's that's all we're really doing here uh, but you get these really incredible um, responses Okay, and then there's just a few examples here, actually. Uh, so you see what GPT-2 strengths and weaknesses, and it says, I don't know. So there's obviously not enough in there for it to uh, do anything. There's a really good one here, which is the extract key libraries and tools. So embedding models, which embed images and text. Okay, let let me copy this. And and what was it? Was, was it bullet points? Or no, extract key libraries and tools. Let's do that. And let's make sure we have everything in there. Okay, and we get this uh, really cool sort of list of all the embedding models that you would use for extracting or which, which can embed images and text. So that's really, really impressive. So that is, I think, pretty much all of that. Uh, there's a little more code, I think, if we if we go up a little bit, so I kind of skipped over this. So we're just creating a context here, uh, which is what we covered above. And then we're just saying, okay, go into the OpenAI completion um, endpoint, and that's it to you know, complete the question or the text that we've given to it. So that's really cool. And yeah, I don't know this sort of thing just almost blows me away a little bit with how impressive it is because it seems almost genuinely intelligent and you ask a question and it gives you like a genuinely intelligent response that it's kind of pulled from all these different sources and formatted in a particular way based on what you've asked it is for me incredibly interesting and yeah definitely something i want to read about more these sort of generative models uh, because it's it's clearly <laughs> really impressive and, and particularly very useful. So that's it for this video. I hope this has been interesting to, to see this demo and, and sort of go through how everything works. But yeah, let me let me know uh, what you think. And if you are interested in, in trying it out, you can do you just go over to share streamlit.io Pancone AI, Playground, Beyond Search, OpenAI, uh, and so on. And if you'd like to take a look at the code for that as well, you, you can do. All you do is head over to this URL here, and then you have all the, the code that I just showed you in here, and also the data as well, uh, if, you, if you'd like that. So, yeah. I think it's been really cool. So thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been useful and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.